Hello and welcome to Jani.tv. In today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a very interesting scenario. We're going to launch an AKS cluster, install Econ with support for custom domains, and then we'll install a stateful application called Gitty based on the custom domain and with TLS certificates. And once the website or the Gitty application is up and running, we will decouple the database and the stateless component of the application. The database will be moved or rather linked with Azure database for PostgreSQL. So this is an end-to-end -end scenario of deploying a stateful application and also consuming a managed cloud service running on Azure. So let's get started. All right, so the very first step in this walkthrough is to create an AKS cluster. So we'll first create a resource group and then provision an AKS cluster running three nodes. We'll then grab the credentials and copy it over to the default kube config location. We'll finally verify the cluster by running kubectl get nodes command. So let's execute these commands one after the other. So we first set the region, then we will initialize the local kube config file and then I'm going to create a resource group and this resource group will act as the container or rather the logical boundary for all the resources belonging to uh, the, the cluster. So this is the crucial step. This is going to take a couple of minutes. So let's wait for the cluster to get provisioned. All right. So now the AKS cluster has been created. So let's proceed with the next step. So let's get the credentials. Yes, let's overwrite. Let's overwrite this. So with the cube config in place, let's see if we can access the cluster. There we go. We have a three node AKS cluster and that concludes the first step. Let's move on to the second. So in the second step, we do a bunch of prerequisites that are required for Econ. So we'll install an ingress, which is an Nginx ingress. Then we'll also update the DNS of our domain because we are using a custom domain. And finally, we'll also install the cert manager through a Helm chart and verify the installation of both these charts, the Helm chart for the Nginx ingress followed by the cert manager. So let's go ahead and install the Helm chart. The first one is the Nginx ingress. So this is going to basically set up the ingress, which is a prerequisite for Econ. So let's give this a minute and we should be able to see a load balancer service getting created as an output of this. Perfect. So now this is done. So let's see if the ingress is installed. It is uh, getting installed. The container is still getting created, but we should have the service up and running. And if you see, there is an external IP, and this is going to be the endpoint that most of the Econ applications will use. So what we're going to do is take this external IP associated with the ingress Nginx controller and update our domain. So I'm going to use a domain for this demo called cloud to edge.in. And I use GoDaddy as my domain registrar on DNS manager. So all I got to do is update my A record. So this is the first A record, which is pointing to et. And then we also have a wild card because we are going to add multiple subdomains. So adding a wild card will help us in generating the let's encrypt certificates for this domain. So now we have updated the DNS for both. Perfect. So let's verify if uh, the DNS propagation has started. So when we type this, we should be able to resolve the IP address. Now, if you, if you notice cloud to edge.in is pointing to the 
IP address of the load balancer. Perfect. So now the ingress is in place and the next step is to install the cert manager which is required for us to generate the certificate requests and approve them automatically. So the next step is to install the cert manager helm chart and this will take a minute and uh, we are going to have both the prerequisites by the end of this step the nginx ingress and the cert manager this is not really a prerequisite for icon but if you are using custom domains and want to generate tls certificates this makes your life easy so let's see if uh, the cert manager is up and running there we go we have all the pods in running state perfect so that concludes the second step where we install the prerequisites for a con let's get on to the third step where we'll actually install a con so it's time to install a con and if you are not running a con on your machine the a con cli you can install it with this brew command but i have already installed a con cli so let's verify that so i'm running the most recent version which is 0.6.0 .0. so this is the most recent one now we are going to install a con with a couple of switches the first one is to make sure that we are pointing to the nginx ingress we install in the last step and we don't want a con to generate the default fqdn or the url for the applications so we are going to disable the icon dns which is typically used to generate automatic urls based on where you are running your cluster it generates different urls if you are running it on let's say minikube and different url if you are running it in public cloud so we are going to disable that because we are going to take full control of the dns and because of that we also associate the icon installation with the domain which is cloud to edge dot in which we have configured in the previous step remember we pointed the a record of cloud to edge to the ingress load balancer ip address so this is going to be the most crucial step for generating the cluster domains so uh, let's go ahead and install a con with these two switches okay so now this is going to run the pre-install checks it should just take a minute that's the beauty of Econ. though it's a very powerful framework all it takes to install on any kubernetes cluster is just a couple of minutes and now we should have the controller the Econ controller ready in our aks cluster after which we can start installing applications and accessing them so let's give it a few more seconds okay so now the controller is installed the registry server deployment is ready and it is running the post install checks which should be done in just a couple of more seconds all right now the installation is done we can verify by typing qcuddle get ns and you can actually see there are three namespaces that are added by econ the first one is the econ the second is econ image system and the third one is econ system so with econ already deployed on aks cluster let's try if we can install a web app not just install a web app but also generate a https a tls enabled website so for that we are going to run a cluster issuer so if you if you are wondering what the cluster issuer is all about this is the cluster issuer uh, it is very specific to the cert manager so i'm going to install this which will associate my email id with let's encrypt and we're also telling uh, what is the endpoint for which it has to generate the ingress which is the nginx so once that is done we'll apply the certificate specific to the url which is going to be called as web.cloudtoedge.in so that is the certificate so this certificate will associate the econ application with the dns name and the cluster issuer is what we created previously which is based on let's encrypt 
So the reason why we are running this is to make sure that Econ is able to generate custom domains with TLS. So we should end up seeing a HTTPS URL. And I have a very simple Econ file here, which is based on Nginx and uh, prints my first Econ on the HTML page. So very, very straightforward. Now let's go ahead and run the cluster issuer. So this is going to associate Let's Encrypt with our cert manager. Then we will run the uh, certificate request specifically for the web.url. Now we need to wait for the certificate to get ready. So I'm going to watch this while the state becomes ready. So currently we see the ready uh, as false. In uh, a few seconds, it should turn true, which means the certificate has been approved by the cert manager and we are all set to deploy the first Acon on our AKS cluster. Not just an Acon, but a TLS enabled Acon web app. There we go. So the web cert is now available. Uh, so let's go ahead and run the uh, web app. Now I'm actually using a few switches. So I'm going to publish the Acon called web. If you see, that is the name of my Acon uh, or the container. So we are associating the container called web with this URL and uh, the uh, name of this application is called test and we are explicitly mentioning which file to use to build this account. So let's go ahead and run this account. So now this is going to pull the Nginx image and very quickly uh, package that as an OCI artifact and deploys that. So Okay, so let's see if our application is ready. If you notice, there is HTTPS that's already available. So in just a few seconds, we should have web.cloud2edge.in, which is going to be available on a HTTPS URL. So this is a, a quick test. If the cert manager is working well, if Acon has been wired to our URL, there we go. So now let's grab this URL. Okay, let's grab this and test this. So there we go. Now, if you look at the padlock icon here and uh, look at the details, it actually shows it's a TLS website and uh, it is based on Let's Encrypt. So. That is the advantage of using Acon with a custom domain and the Let's Encrypt certificate. Perfect. So now we have verified the installation of Acon and the, uh, the working of a HTTPS enabled application. Perfect. So let's delete this. We don't need this Acon anymore. We'll also delete the certificate that we have created. So we are back to a blank slate and in the next step we actually deploy our application which is Gitty. So let's move to step four. So before deploying Gitty as an icon application I want to spend a minute giving you the background. If you're not familiar Gitty is a self-hosted git service that mimics github. So if you're not comfortable relying on a third party source code control system, you want to self host your own Git repo, this is a great option. And the best thing is, this actually runs on Kubernetes and also with Docker. So if you actually look at the documentation, there are various Docker files that are available. And the best thing is, Gitty also supports multiple database backends, including MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, and so on. And this is one of the Docker Compose files for Gitty. So our goal is to take Gitty and deploy it as an Acon application. So for that, we have a pretty well-defined Acon file, which looks very similar to what we have seen. Uh, so let me show you the Acon file. So here, 
we have two containers, container images. The first one is we are starting with a Postgres image and then we populate the username and the secret, the password defined as secrets within Econ. Uh, if you are not familiar with defining secrets in Econ, please refer to the documentation. Uh, then I basically point the PostgreSQL data directory to one of the subpaths, which is called data. And we expose 5432 as an internal TCP port. So this is the backend. This is the PostgreSQL container. The next container within our Econ application is the Gitty container itself. So here we pull the Gitty image from Docker Hub and then we populate a set of environment variables. If you notice, we are pointing this to DB, which is what we defined here. And this is very, very similar to the way you define a Docker Compose file. In fact, I have simply migrated the Docker Compose file shown in the Gitty documentation into Econ. Uh, so we are mounting one of the directories and we are publishing port 3000 as a HTTP port. Uh, and, and the difference between expose and publish is publish is basically meant for web endpoints, whereas expose is typically meant for internal endpoints, which will translate to cluster IP. They are meant for databases, cache, and so on, not exposed to the outside world. Whereas publish will take your container and exposes that uh, on, the, on the ingress that is wired to Econ. Then we have secrets. Uh, I left it as blank, which means Econ is going to populate them at runtime and I'll conveniently use them here without uh, really uh, generating them manually. And then we are also creating two volumes, one for database, one for Git. So these volumes will eventually translate into Kubernetes PVCs and PVs. So if you notice, we have multiple sections. There is a container section that define the containers. Then there is a secret section. Then there is volumes. So pretty straightforward. If you are new to Econ, spend some time on the Econ file reference. And if you are coming from Docker Compose background, you will find this extremely familiar and uh, very similar. Perfect. So now we have the Econ file. It's time for us to deploy this application. Before we can access the application or even deploy the application, we need to create the certificate associated with this TLS endpoint. And what is that endpoint called? Well, uh, we want to host Gitty at git.cloud2edge.in. So this is the DNS name that I want to associate. So for that, I need to uh, create a certificate and wait for it to get approved by the cert manager. So that's the first step. So let's go ahead and run this. It's going to take a few seconds uh, for this to get approved. And once it is approved, it'll, it'll become ready. And uh, as soon as it is ready, we can go ahead and deploy the Gitty application, which will become available at the choice of our endpoint, which is git.cloud2edge.in. There is a reason why I'm calling this as cloud2edge.in because the Gitty that we are setting up right now is going to be utilized to run GitOps for edge machines. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can leverage this Gitty installation to push images uh, to a bunch of Raspberry Pis via GitOps. So because we are pushing them from the cloud to the edge, I, I bought this domain called cloud to edge .in. And the certificate is now ready. Let's proceed with the next step. So now, based on what we have seen earlier, it's pretty straightforward. We are going to publish this container called Gitty at git.cloud to edge .in, And we are going to call this application as git. And I'm using the current directory because the default account file has the definition of the entire Gitty app. All right, now let's go ahead and run this. This is fun. It's going to take some time, but uh, at the end of this, we are going to have a URL where we can access Gitty. All 
okay now it is provisioning the volumes uh, as soon as the volumes are ready the containers will get created and we'll be able to access the application okay so now let's let's watch the url and uh, very soon we should be able to see the https endpoint which is obviously going to be https git dot cloud to edge dot in so there we go so now let's grab this url go back to safari paste this and this is the Gitty install page, very similar to WordPress. Now, if you look at the username and password, we never generated this. This came from Econ. So Econ generated them dynamically and wired them to the secret. So we got to do a couple of things. Uh, so if you, if you carefully notice, the Gitty base URL is pointing to localhost. This is not the case. We are actually running Gitty at this URL, so I'm going to paste this. And then the server domain is definitely not localhost. We should give the entire URL without the HTTPS. And let's also populate uh, some values for the admin account. So let's install Gitty. It's going to take a minute and we may see a bad gateway don't don't get panic if you see this all you got to do is just do a refresh and there we go now we are inside gitty and you can go ahead and create new repositories so this resembles github quite a bit and uh, now we are running gitty as an icon perfect so that concludes this step and in the next step we'll do interesting things like moving the stateful component of this Gitty to Azure Managed Database. Stay tuned. So in the next step, we are going to launch a PostgreSQL Managed Database on Azure, configure it, for example, removing the prerequisite of requiring a secure transport. Uh, we are actually doing this as a part of demo, so we don't need to enable SSL, so we're going to disable that. And then we are going to follow some steps that will link this database with the Gitty icon. So before we go further, let's delete the current Gitty application because we are going to launch it all over again with the managed database wired to it. And uh, to make sure we'll also remove the uh, PVs that are created as a part of the previous installation. So we are going to delete the PV created for Gitty and then we'll also delete the database created for, uh, sorry, we'll also delete the PV created for the database. All right. So we are basically resetting the system. Now we don't have any traces of Gitty left. We tested it once and we have deleted the icon application. We have deleted the PVs associated with it. And now it's time to basically launch a database in Azure. So we're going to use the same icon demo resource group that we have used in the very first step. And here uh, we are going to uh, create a server by name gitty icon I am hardwiring the password. I don't try this at home, not a best practice, but for this demo, it is fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. It's going to take a few minutes. So be patient while the database is getting created. I want to spend a minute explaining you what this means here, the public access. So basically we are opening up all access to this database, uh, any IP originating from Azure including the ingress endpoints will have access. So that's what this switch is meant to be. We don't need high availability. It is going to be expensive. So I have disabled. 
but you know if you if you notice the resource group is straightforward admin user admin password database name all of that so uh, let's run this and give it a few minutes okay so now the database is ready uh, this is the connection string it is allowing the connections to come from the source and the target IP addresses the range we need to do one more thing before we can connect this to our Gitty deployment so let's disable the SSL so this is going to take just a few seconds so we are going to disable the required secure transport flag okay so now the database is ready for us so here we are within the Azure portal and if you look at the account demo resource group you will see exactly two resources one is the kubernetes service the AKS cluster the other one is the Azure database for PostgreSQL this is what we just created now here if you if you can uh, click on the databases you should be able to see Gitty as a database that's created and uh, within the server parameters you can search for the parameter that we just disabled which is the require secure transport now, this is needed because without this uh, you you will not be able to connect from normal Gitty. you need to generate a set of certificates and then associate that with the client so to avoid that we have just simply disabled and again this is fine because we are running a tutorial and not a production grade deployment all right so now we need to do two interesting things number one we need to create a service called the external name so the external name service if you are familiar with is a type of a kubernetes service that doesn't have an ip address or a pointer to an internal pod but it refers to an external URL, an FQDN. So this is the FQDN generated by the Azure database for Postgres. So you can, you can go to the connection strings and you can see this is the host name, gitty-acon.postgres.database.azure.com. So we have taken that and we're going to create a service within the Acon namespace pointing to the FQDN so this will basically register a proxy endpoint for the database so let's do that so now this is created we can check the service now it has nothing associated with it except the external FQDN name that's all we want now in order to connect to the database of course we need the username and password and here we have the login and password so what we can do is we can register that as a secret within kubernetes so for that we will basically encode them into base64 and generate a secret file so this is how we generate the base64 encoded uh, uh, secrets that we can put within the secret file so I grab the username and password and I have created uh, the YAML file to register a secret within the Acon namespace now we have all the elements required which is basically the FQDN the endpoint of the database and also the credentials needed to talk to the database so let's create the secret let's verify the secret it should have the username and password okay now at this point what we have done is created an external database and registered that with Acon but we don't have any consumers for this managed database service now that is the next step where we'll create the Gitty Acon application but this time instead of using the container for Postgres will point it to the managed database that we just created so let's move to the next step 
Okay, we are almost at the final step. Now, what we are going to do here is deploy Gitty Acon, but point that to the Azure PostgreSQL database that we created in the previous step. So for that, we will add two new switches. You are familiar with publish or hyphen P, which we have seen in the previous step, but I'm going to add a new switch called hyphen hyphen link and the name of the uh, service that we created here. So if you remember, that is the service that we created called the AZ PG SQL DB. So now we are basically linking that with the container called DB. Then we also need to link the secret. So remember we created a secret with the base64 encoded values. Now we are linking that secret into the DB user uh, secret already available within the Econ file. So let's take a look at the Econ file that is going to be bound or linked to the Azure database. So here you'll notice a few things uh, from the previous version. So if you uh, look at this side by side, let me open these two side by side. And if you see, we completely got rid of the DB container. We don't need that anymore, but we are still referring to DB uh, as one of the endpoints. The reason is uh, we have registered a service and that service is now acting as the DB. So the environment variable still remains to be the same, you know, just like the way we did here, except that instead of having an explicit container running within the Acon context, we are now referring to a proxy, which is called the DB, but it is pointing to the Azure managed database. So everything is almost intact, except that we conveniently got rid of anything that is related to the stateful container, that is the PostgreSQL uh, container. So we completely removed this section, that is the container definition. We removed the uh, volumes, because we are not going to create anything uh, for this. And uh, remaining content or the definition of the Econ file remains the same. So let's go ahead and uh, create the Econ without the Postgres, but with a pointer to Azure database for PG SQL. Perfect. So now it's going to generate the URL in uh, just a few seconds. The reason is uh, we have one less container. We are not creating the stateful container. So it's fairly straightforward. So this is going to create the application and it should be ready in just a couple of minutes. All right. So let's watch for the Econ apps. So the HTTPS URL is in the works. There we go. This is now ready. Let me grab this. Okay, we are again back to the same config screen. Everything remains the same. We first need to change the URL because we are using a custom domain and not local host. So install Gitty. Now this is going to basically take advantage of the Azure managed database. All right, let's do a quick refresh. It should come up in a minute. There we go. Okay, so now you can uh, register. So let me quickly register. I'm going to be the demo user. All right, now this is where you can create new repos. And you know, let's call this test. Everything else is the default, create the repository. There we go. So now you can basically run these commands, just treat it like uh, GitHub and use it for a self-hosted Git repo. You can store all your source code and use the standard Git client. The only difference is instead of talking to a hosted Git platform like GitLab or GitHub, you are running it in your Kubernetes cluster. 
perfect so now we have an icon application which has the stateful part delegated or offloaded to a managed database running in the public cloud which is azure database for postgresql so that is the last step of this demo now let me perform the cleanup so i'm going to remove the application and finally uh, remove the resource group in azure otherwise this is going to be uh, a very expensive a component to your Azure bill. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up my Azure account by deleting this uh, resource group called the account demo. And that concludes the tutorial on deploying stateful applications with Acon with linked resources to the public cloud. Now this is the part one of the two part series. In series two, we're going to leverage this Gitty deployment to perform GitOps based deployments at the edge. It's going to be an interesting scenario. Stay tuned for that. And we'll pick up from where we left to continue with GitOps. Thanks for watching. And I hope you found this useful.